In this video, I will show you a capacitor whose capacitance is C farads. Here, I will apply an alternating voltage V. The alternating voltage V is given by this equation V equal to Vm sin omega t. As this is a pure sine wave, that means it will have an wave shape like this. It will have positive and negative half cycles. As I am applying an alternating voltage here, you will see I will get an alternating current flowing in the circuit. Let's uh, denote that current with I. In this video, I will show you the waveform of that alternating current I. After that, I will show you the phase relationship or the phase difference between the applied voltage and the current flowing in the circuit. After that, I will show you phase or diagram. After that, I will show you the equation of instantaneous power and at last I will show you the equation of average power consumed by the capacitor. In this video, I will talk about current equation derivation and phase difference and in the next video, I will talk about phase or diagram, instantaneous power and the average power absorbed by the capacitor. Here, I am applying an alternating voltage. Okay. As a result, I will get an alternating current I. In case of this capacitive circuit, our alternating current I will be known as charging current because the charging current will cause the capacitor plates to be charged in positive and negative charges. Therefore, this is known as charging current. As I will get charging current flowing in the circuit, therefore, I will get instantaneous charge Q in the circuit. We can calculate the instantaneous charge Q by using this formula Q equal to capacitance C into instantaneous voltage V. Here our instantaneous voltage V is given by Vm sin omega t. Therefore, Q equal to Cvm sin omega t will be our equation number 1. Here I am applying an alternating voltage. As a result, I will get an alternating current. This implies that the change of charges in the capacitor plates will not be constant. Therefore, our dq by dt will not be equal to zero. Therefore, I can easily calculate our instantaneous current I using dq by dt by taking the derivative of instantaneous charge. Here, our dq by dt will be equal to d dt of cvm sin omega t. The capacitance C and the Vm is a constant quantity. Therefore, I will take it out of the derivative sign. d dt of sin omega t. If I take the derivative of sin omega t with respect to time, I will get omega cos omega t. Okay, so our instantaneous current I will be equal to omega C Vm cosine omega t. Here, if I want to convert the cosine omega t into sine theta, I will write it like this. Omega C Vm sine omega t plus 90 degree. I have converted the instantaneous current I into sine omega t because I will draw the waveform and the phase or diagram of the alternating current or the charging current I. Now see here omega C. I can write omega C like this Vm divided by 1 by omega C sin omega t plus 90 degree. This 1 by omega C is known as capacitive reactance xc in a circuit this capacitive reactance describes the ohmic opposition encountered by an alternating current while flowing through a circuit i will talk about capacitive reactance in a separate video so our instantaneous current i will be equal to vm divided by 1 by omega c as 1 by omega c is known as capacitive reactance so i can write down our instantaneous current i equal to vm divided by capacitive reactance sine 
omega t plus 90 degree vm by xc will be our maximum value of current i m sin omega t plus 90 degree where i m is the ratio of maximum value of voltage and the capacitive reactance of the circuit and here we get this current i equal to i m sin omega t plus 90 degree when we apply the alternating voltage v equal to v m sin omega t so these are the voltage and current equations of the pure capacitive circuit now let me show you the phase difference between the voltage and currents in a pure capacitive circuit here our voltage v is equal to v m sin omega t or v m sin omega t plus zero degree and our alternating current i is given by i m sin omega t plus 90 degree now see if i compare the voltage and current with standard sinusoidal equation x t equal to a m sin omega t plus or minus phi not initial phase you will see our initial phase of the current phi i will be equal to plus or positive 90 degree and our initial phase of the voltage phi v will be equal to zero degree let's say in this graph i take the voltage and current in the y axis and i take the omega t in the x axis with 30 degree displacement see the initial phase of the alternating voltage will be zero therefore it will have the origin at this point here you will see it will get its maximum value let's say at this instant when the phase angle will be at 90 degree it will get its zero value when phase angle will be 180 degree and it will get its negative maximum when the phase angle will be 270 degree and it will get its zero value at this point okay so if i add these four points i will get our alternating voltage v now see the initial phase of the alternating current is plus 90 degree that means the origin of this alternating current will be 90 degree ahead from the reference axis this is our reference axis and the origin of the alternating current will be from this point okay so uh, from this point to 90 degree i will get its positive maximum plus i m from this point to another 90 degree that means at phase angle of 90 degree i will get its zero value from an angle at the angle of 180 degree i will get its negative maximum value and at the angle of 270 degree i will get its zero value the negative maximum of the alternating current will be minus i m the positive maximum of the alternating voltage will be plus v m and the positive and the negative maximum of the alternating voltage will be minus v m now see i will draw the alternating voltage and alternating currents so if i draw the voltage and current waveforms you will see this will be our alternating voltage v and this will be our alternating current i okay now look at the origin of the alternating voltage v and look at the origin of the alternating current i here you will see the origin of the alternating current i will be 90 degree ahead from the origin of the alternating voltage therefore i can say in a pure capacitor current i leads v by an angle of 90 degree or i can say v lags 
i by an amount of 90 degree c see if i want to go from this point to this point i have to travel by an angle of 30 60 90 degree or if i want to go from this point to this point i have to travel by an amount of by an angle of 90 degree so i can say that as the origin of the current is ahead 90 degree ahead of the origin of the alternating voltage in a power capacitor our alternating current will lead the alternating voltage v by an amount of 90 degree okay that's it in my next video i will show you the phasor diagram and the instantaneous power and average power consumed by the alternating quantity okay that's it thank you